here I am back again filming in my bathroom. Today I wanted to talk about the harsh truths. I hate short form video content. <laughs> Let's talk about the real problems hitting the youths of tomorrow, okay? So I'm just gonna chit chat whilst I get ready. Chit chat, get ready with me, one could call it. Okay, here's the thing. I tried, like many of us, I tried TikTok. My feed is still garbage. I literally will never get over it. Like, I don't know how. I've seen the quality content that can come out of TikTok. That's just not my feed. I know everyone's gonna be like, you just need to do this and this and this and this and this. Uh, genuinely, I have tried. My overall beef, with short form content and TikTok in general. I mean, I think TikTok serves like an excellent purpose. My overall issue is that like, I don't think that TikTok creates room for connection, okay? So I feel like, and, and maybe this is just because, you know, I'm old school. I gained my career through Instagram and it makes me just sad to see the platform going where it is like many people and I feel like a lot of people are like oh my god it's like a free platform like quit complaining blah blah, blah. but it's like it's just like I have this attachment because to me Instagram is like the epitome of where you do create parasocial relationships <laughs> and like that may not be a good thing necessarily like Instagram and YouTube rather I feel um, I feel like people a lot of the time start like really falling in love with people's personalities on YouTube and then they follow Instagram feeling like, oh, this is like my friend, you know? Um, and to me, like, I, I think that that's where the true power of social media comes from because like you do grow with your audience and you know, like you know things about these people that you follow, like whoever you follow on YouTube and Instagram and stuff like that, like I feel like you know them on a different level than you know people on TikTok. Like I, I genuinely, there's people on my feed on TikTok that I've seen hundreds of times. I could not tell you their name. And if you told me their name, I'd be like, it just doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> like, I genuinely don't know anything about them. I don't know if they have a partner. If they do have a partner, I don't know their name. I don't know if they have pets. I don't know like anything about them, which it's like, I think that there's a place for that, obviously, and it's TikTok. Um, like, I, I think that it's good in a way to have some of those people that you follow. But to me, like, that is the magic of social media is like, having more of a connection with somebody and being able to create connections with people that you otherwise would have never met or known about or whatever. Because like, if you look at what, I'm really dissecting this in a way that I'm going far too deep and I don't need to at all. But like, there's some people that I follow that have really helped me to like change my perspective on things. The same way that like friends, like real friends in my life have you know, I've had conversations with them that have helped me to change my perspective on things. That's what I really value about p people in general is like having different perspectives on things and having all of these different life experiences coming together to ultimately like make you a better person, teach you new things, all of that kind of stuff. And I feel like that's where, you know, that's why social media is such an effective marketing tool and that's why social media is so effective in general and why it overtakes so much of our time as a society because like it can be really anything you want it to be like it can be just entertainment and an escape and all that kind of stuff but it can also be you know this opportunity for connection this opportunity for growth this op opportunity for learning for support um all of those different things and like to me, when I look back over the course of my career, the things that have been the most satisfying are creating those connections with people and feeling like I'm able to talk about things that I wish I had heard somebody talking about. Like, I feel like that sounds so, um, that's such a like common thing to say now, but it, it's true. Like, I do think a lot of content creators get into it because like, you know, like I follow this one person on TikTok, her name is Honest Mom. I believe it was her. <laughs> Again, like I, 
what's her real name? I don't know. Was it content from her? Can't recall. Um, I also hate that you can't like easily find content again on TikTok. Anyways, whatever. She, I think it was her that talked about how like when she got onto TikTok, like at the beginning of the pandemic, there was like nobody really talking about like being a mom in a, in a more honest way or a more varied way, I guess. Um, like they were only kind of showing the highlights and so she felt really alone in that. Um, and to me, like that is the things that that's where I personally have felt the most fulfilled through my career. And that's also where I felt the most connected to you guys is through content where like, I'm talking about health problems I'm going through. I'm talking about depression. I'm talking about my whole po postpartum journey, um, or like relationship problems or, you know, like, and, and the podcast too, like when I was doing the podcast with Alyssa, it not only was like such a great way for me to connect with Alyssa even more, but also with you guys <laughs> and to feel like you know we were actually talking about things that mattered um and so you know like i enjoy talking about makeup i enjoy teaching you guys what i know and i enjoy learning from other people and stuff like that but what i enjoy even more is connecting and feeling like there's some kind of kinship there you know um, so I think that short form content can bring a lot of joy and a lot of entertainment and stuff like that. But long form content is really, to me, the only place where you can genuinely make people feel heard and understood and less alone and all of those things and to me like that is to me that is social media's biggest strength like it can be such an isolating tool it can be something that makes you feel so bad about yourself if you're using it that way <laughs> you know like if i use a hammer backwards it's going to create more damage if you're using it properly well in the way that makes you happy then it can be such a good thing. It can be something that's helping you learn and grow as a person and feel, you know, joy from it and all that kind of stuff or not. And so I don't know, like, I just feel like for me, and again, maybe that's partially because I'm on all of the wrong sides of TikTok. But even when I look at the reels that people are producing and stuff and trying to produce it myself, I just feel like I want so badly to sit down and ramble. Like I want to be able to talk about things more thoroughly than having to summarize in a 30 second video because I'm the same way as a lot of people are now where it's like, I genuinely just don't have the patience for more than that. Like, so I want to only watch things for 12 seconds. And if it's longer than that, then I'm kind of like, oh my God, like, good Lord. Um, get to the point. But when I'm sitting and listening to like a podcast or an audiobook or whatever, like I recently listened to um, Jeanette McCurdy's book, um, I'm Glad My Mom Died. And I literally have been like yearning <laughs> for another book like that. So if you have any suggestions, definitely let me know. Um, because like, I do find it so interesting learning about real life experiences and growth and how you know going through these things changed you as a person and what you learn from it and all that kind of stuff because like I personally that's like one of the most fulfilling things in life to me is like understanding why we are the way that we are why we say what we do and act how we do and where that stemmed from like I, I love dissecting shit like that. Maybe you can summarize that into a 17 second video, but should you? <laughs> so that's really my main beef. And also the other thing is that like, you know, I was asking about this on my stories. I was asking, first of all, what kind of content you'd like to see more of from me and where, and the majority, the vast majority said YouTube. Um, and they, I had a lot of people DMing me saying that basically the only reason they're not using YouTube very much is because people aren't uploading as much to YouTube. So they don't feel like they check it as frequently because, you know, there was obviously like a trend of time where they were checking it and then people weren't uploading. So it just kind of slowly phased out of their lives more and more. Um, but for me, there was, there were a few people that had DM'd me saying like, I don't really have time anymore for 
YouTube. Like I don't have time to sit down and watch a, you know, 30 minute video or whatever. This is where I still prefer YouTube because I actually feel like when I'm on TikTok and even Instagram, that's literally what I'm doing. <laughs> Like you have to be consumed into that app. You have to be paying attention to what you're doing because if you're not, then it's just not really interesting. Like it's not interesting to listen to TikTok, you know? Um, you kind of have to be watching it. And so I end up spending so much time just sucked into that app and a small portion of that time, I'm actually taking in things that are what I want to be listening to or what I want to be seeing or something that's going to inspire me or whatever. Whereas when I'm listening to a YouTube video or a podcast or, um, you know, a audio book or whatever, I'm gaining that thing that I want, which is, you know, connection or growth or just hearing someone else's story or whatever it is. I'm gaining that while actually living my life too. <laughs> like, and I don't know if this is a healthy habit or not. It feels better to me. I'll usually put on a YouTube video and play it in the background while I'm um, painting or cleaning or doing laundry or gardening or whatever. Like I'll have that playing. I cannot describe to you how sweaty my boobs are right now. Um, and so to me, like that content ends up feeling better and that consumption of that content ends up feeling better because I'm doing something else while also taking in this knowledge or connection or whatever. And so I used to have, um, a phone where I would have like TikTok, well, not really TikTok at the time, but I would have Instagram and, um, all my other social media apps and stuff like that on that phone and then on my main phone I would have you know like people I actually talk to on the phone and text and stuff like that and then I had no social media apps and it honestly was awesome because um I spent so much less time on social media when social media wasn't really making me that happy um but I think again it was because of the type of content I was consuming it was because of like the endless like mindless scrolling and like here's the thing I don't necessarily like to use descriptors like that when I'm talking to a general audience because TikTok and Instagram and social media in general might not be mindless scrolling for you. Like it might honestly be the reprieve in your day and the thing that you like actually enjoy and like it actually helps your mental health and stuff like that. And if that's the case for you, I fucking love that for you. That's great. It's literally at your fingertips and that's awesome. Um, but for me, that's not how, con how, how social media translates mentally and emotionally, specifically when it is like what I would consider for me mindless scrolling. And ultimately like, you know, I feel like we all have limited time. And because of that, I want the things that I'm investing time into, I want them to serve me positively, you know? I'm just gonna pop on Viceroy Half Lash. I honestly have been a fucking Viceroy bitch lately. I don't know what to tell you. I don't even know who I am. Here's the thing with TikTok, okay? Because I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand why content creators started moving away from YouTube. But basically, let me give you a rundown, okay? This is gonna come across like a real first world problem and it like, absolutely is. The pandemic happened. <laughs> Cue COVID. TikTok at that time obviously started becoming extremely popular and people were just spending time enjoying that platform and it was a really great time waster and we all had a lot more time on our hands. At the beginning, Most of us had a lot more time on our hands in the beginning of COVID um, because, you know, we were having lockdowns and people were off work and all that kind of stuff. And so it was like the perfect time for TikTok to really blow up. And I think at that time there was like this younger generation of content creators that were getting excited about this new platform. Whereas like this older generation of content creators that were more specific to Instagram and YouTube were just watching TikTok and enjoying it, but not necessarily creating content for it as much as smaller, like, as much as younger creators were. And so now younger creators are, you know, still some of the highest performing creators on that app are younger, like either literally teenagers or like very early twenties. 
Um, and I think by the time that the older kind of generation, this is just pure speculation, by the way, based off like my personal experience. Um, but I think by the time that like older content creators started realizing that like brands were switching over all of their marketing budgets to TikTok, it was sort of like, oh fuck, like now we have to catch up. And there was a very distinct moment where I was like, ooh, I should probably get on TikTok. And then I was like, nah, um, <clears throat> that was to my detriment. Let me tell you. But also what was happening at that time was other apps were starting to realize how much more people were prioritizing the short form content because really like the app that was performing was TikTok. So then we saw obviously Instagram kind of um, start doing reels. Now YouTube is doing YouTube shorts and those platforms are um, really prioritizing that content. They're prioritizing the short form content. So on Instagram, obviously everyone's been seeing and hearing everyone talk about how um, the only thing that are performing are reels. And so our entire feed is reels. And it's very obvious that like, that's what Instagram is, you know, um, prioritizing. And so we're seeing no photo content at all. And people are less inclined to produce photo content because it's not performing well and it doesn't push you out into the algorithm. So it's basically like you're just spinning your wheels for nothing. And so now it's like everyone is kind of slowly realizing like if I want to continue to keep my career afloat, if I want to continue to grow my career, if I want to continue to have like ads coming in and stuff like that, I basically have to be doing short form content. Like that's generally kind of the temperature that I feel like a lot of content creators are feeling. So. It's sort of like, why would I spend all this time doing something else like YouTube, like longer form content when like, that's not really what's like actually benefiting the growth of my channel or even like the sustaining of my channel, um, let alone bringing in ads and stuff like that, which ultimately like, I think a lot of, wow, this is like the most rambly video. I think I can't get ramblier and then I do. It's like this just whoosh, continue like stream of consciousness. Anyways, um, I think that like, a lot of people still dislike hearing that, but ultimately like it is a job, <laughs> like at the end of the day, like a lot of people do content creation because they enjoy it and because they're talking about things that they love and stuff like that. But ultimately like if it's not paying your bills, then like you do have to do other forms of work and then you won't subsequently have enough time to be producing content the way that you need to consistently enough to continue to have a career in that that platform so it's like you have to be making money to be able to have the time to continue to produce content like that unfortunately there are like that select few group of people because i know there will be somebody in the comments that's like well this person had a full-time job blah 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 um that's rare most people can't sustain that type of work-life balance where they're able to have a full-time job and also be producing content consistently enough to do well on any platform social media wise so at some point you do kind of have to go where the money goes and you know we are seeing that that is short form content so i think that there was a natural decline in the amount of content being posted on youtube over COVID because honestly, people were just taking a break, <laughs> like, like everyone else, like they were just kind of taking a little bit of time off. Um, and we were all spending that time on TikTok and look at the monster we've created. Um, well, not everyone was spending time on TikTok, you know, obviously there was people spending time on Animal Crossing. Overall, I do think that that's why we're seeing a lot less content creation on YouTube. The platforms themselves are not protecting the content that was originally intended for that platform. Um, so that makes it really hard to continue doing what that platform was originally intended for because it's no longer intended for that. So for Instagram, it's like, yeah, I can post photos every day on Instagram, but like to what end? If it's not sustaining my account, let alone growing my account, let alone bringing in money. Um, and similarly with YouTube, but all of that to say, <laughs> I'm like, here's all the reasons why this isn't going to make me money and why it's not smart for me to spend my time on this. I'd like to spend more time on this. <laughs> but sincerely, I, gosh, I just like, I do miss the connection through social media that I was experiencing before. Um, because as much as like, I think sometimes like, that whole parasocial relationship can feel very one-sided and often is. I think that it's not 
this exact same feeling because like I'm not necessarily connecting with one person that like I can put a name to and I know you so well as well and like even though we don't know each other in person it's like we both it's not really like that but like in general it's like to me my parasocial relationship is with like the larger community um you know of of viewers and I feel like I really miss that connection um because I did start to enjoy my job more and feel more inclined to post content and stuff like that when I started talking about things that were actually important to me and things that were impacting my life. And at the time, that was mental health because my mental health had been in a bad place for quite a while. And because my mental health was so bad, it's so funny because like I still feel this like immediate tinge of like, oh my God, like this just sounds like the most complainy shit ever. And people are gonna be like, boo fucking who. But like, it, it, if you've truly experienced like more severe mental health issues, like you can understand likely that it, it does, it makes it so difficult to do literally anything. Like showering, talking to friends, cooking yourself food, like let alone, working and going to the gym and all of that kind of stuff. I felt like I was at such a low point that literally all I could think about was how miserable I was and how much that was like impacting my life and how much I felt like I was never going to be able to get out of that cycle. And so when I would sit down to film, I would just feel so insincere because I felt like I was trying to put on and trying to make it seem like I was having a good time when I wasn't because it was also really bothering me when people would say like, you seem not happy, like you seem like you hate this job and it's so annoying to watch and you seem like you don't want to be here, or like you're not passionate anymore or whatever. But it's like, I literally just didn't have the mental or emotional or physical <laughs> energy to, to do it in the first place, let alone to like do it well. And so I would sit down and feel like so kind of phony basically trying to make it seem like I was excited to be there filming and like I was enjoying myself and stuff like that when it's, I just wasn't because like I was struggling so much mentally. And then finally, it was just so overwhelming that I was like, I literally can't not talk. Like I can't sit down and film another video without just fucking saying what I need to say about this. I was really embarrassed at first, um, kind of talking about mental health because I wasn't able to do it without like crying. <laughs> and I'm still not to this day able to do it without crying <laughs> in a lot of videos, but um, it, it feels embarrassing in a way because I feel like that's like our society, like we're supposed to be embarrassed by, you know, just like this complete outward display of emotion. but. It, it also was like the biggest weight off my shoulders. And then the next time I sat down to film, I felt like so much lighter and like, I can do this, you know? Like I can actually sit down and do this because I'm able to just talk about what I need to talk about. Lately, I find myself in a place again where I'm really craving that kind of connection. I would say that I'm a pretty like fairly self-aware person and especially so in a way where like I'm able to to know what I'm feeling um, and to recognize when I'm not feeling great and seeing that kind of downward spiral happening and intervene before it happens. Um, and so like I'll know at this point in my life when I'm like, ooh, yeah, like I kind of feel like that like depression creeping in a little bit. So I should do A, B, and C to make sure that like this doesn't get worse and I'll just stay on top of this and whatever. Um, but recently I haven't been feeling good and I literally, I couldn't put a name to the feeling. Like I was like, I don't know what the fuck this is. <laughs> and I was trying to even think like, what, what am I feeling so that I can Google it so that I can maybe figure out like what this is. But I literally just couldn't. Like it was just this like weird, kind of emptiness and feeling unsatisfied, even though I know I have like a really beautiful life, I have a really beautiful child, like I have so many things to be happy about. I enjoy my job, I enjoy Auric, like I 
have so many great things, you know? So like, what is this feeling and why am I feeling so down? And why does it feel so different from like normal depression for me? And I went into my counselor, Annie, sweet Annie. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I can't put a name to this feeling, but I'm just feeling really bad. And you know, like maybe it's this, maybe it's that, maybe it's blah, blah, blah. And then she was like, well, do you think with the loss of Alyssa, because if you don't know, my best friend Alyssa lived in my house with me for the last like four-ish years. And she recently moved out and moved like five hours away. And so um, my counselor was like, do you think with the loss of Alyssa, you're feeling lonely? And I was like, why the hell would you say that to me? <laughs> why would you point that out? I know I explicitly asked you, but this is frankly rude and I would like her money back. And I just immediately started crying. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, of course I feel fucking lonely, Annie. It's, you know, it's hard because like I had this person living in my house that I'm so close to that like we talk, like, like the way that Alyssa and I communicate, I've said this before, but like Alyssa was the person that I had the podcast with and people would comment a lot of the times in the podcast being like, oh, like I wish I had a friendship like this. Like you guys just seem like you like are so close and you get each other so well and blah, blah, blah. Literally like you cannot understand what it looks like. Doesn't even scratch this. Like our friendship is so much better than even how it looks from the outside. <laughs> like we just, we get each other. She's literally my soulmate. Like we, she, we understand each other so well. It's like the easiest friendship ever. Like we don't like, we know if we're both in a mood where we want to talk. We know if we're both in a mood where we don't want to talk and we just want to sit there and be near each other. Like everything that's not normally fun is fun when we're together. Like, and it's just so, and like we can request things of each other. Like, you know, like if we want to talk about something but we don't necessarily want advice or whatever, like we can do that. And we rarely, if ever fought. And when we did fight, it was a lot more like, hey, like I'm just, you know, like this kind of hurt my feelings, whatever. Um, and it was so not a confrontation. Um, and so every night, um, most nights rather, I should say, um, we would sit in the hot tub together and just talk <laughs> about our day. And so it was like every single day I had, I know I have like a husband, but it's like, it's so different. It's so different having like a friend, you know what I mean? Cause sometimes you need to talk about your relationships too. And similarly, I need to talk about my friendships to my husband and whatever, but it's like, it was just such a beautiful, beautiful daily ritual to be able to like get together, sit and chat, for five minutes, for two hours, whatever it is, and go over our day and talk about what's going on. And it was just like, we were constantly so in the loop with each other and we constantly knew what was going on. And, and so the, it didn't feel like there was this pressure of like, I, I don't know. I mean, there's, I know there's people that like, just actually are private with their lives, literally can't relate. Um, but like when I haven't talked about something that's on my mind, it literally sits on my tongue. <laughs> like it is, it is front and center, especially if it's somebody that I would normally talk about things to kind of thing. It's like front and center in my mind. Like I, I cannot stop thinking about how much I want to talk about this thing to them. And so to relate this back to content creation, that is, I think the thing that I struggle with so much is like when I think about producing content for any platform, but especially because I've been trying to pay attention to TikTok and trying to like see if that's a platform that I feel like I want to keep up with <laughs> because realistically I probably should be doing it, but it's just like, I don't know that I can, to be honest. Um, it's just not really for me. But um, when I think about producing content for TikTok, I think about all of these topics that I want to talk about that are important to me and I'm like, I literally, I cannot summarize that. I cannot summarize that in a way that will actually create meaningful connection. And especially because the way that content lives on TikTok, it is so unbelievably fleeting. Like 
there's a fair amount of people that comment on my YouTube channel and say like, you know, they'll come back to this video, they've watched this video however many times, whatever. I personally don't ever go back to content on TikTok because honestly, it's usually a sound bite. Like it's not really content so much as like, it's a summary of what content would be normally. It, it just doesn't do it for me in the same way. And so it also feels kind of unsatisfying producing that content because where I produce, you know, a YouTube video and it lives in such a different way where it feels like it's something you would actually think to come back to and it's something that will impact you more than like a seven second video. And that makes it feel worthwhile to me. It feels like worthwhile content for you and I both because it's hitting you in a completely different way. Whereas like it's the difference between if someone came to you and said, you're pretty versus like, you're so thoughtful and like intelligent and you just make people feel so special. And you know what I mean? It's like that. And it's the difference between someone being like, fuck you. And like that really hurt my feelings when you said that. And it made me feel like you don't value me and like you know what i mean it's like those are two very different things that's like a drive-by comment versus like i'm actually engaged in this connection <laughs> theme of the video is connection and so to me it's like that whole life cycle of content on tiktok and reels and whatever else feels so unsatisfying because you are just kind of getting this interaction of like cool neat so true versus I don't know if you've ever taken a peek, even if you, you personally are not a commenter, I don't know if you've ever taken a peek at a comment section on any of my videos, but a lot of the times it's a thesis. Like it's, <laughs> it's a full on like, yeah, let's fucking talk about that. And it's so <laughs> much more satisfying to read because there's not a fucking character limit because people can actually share their thoughts and feelings and their experience with you and all that kind of stuff. And it's just like, it's so, so, so different. And it makes you feel like you're actually doing something, like you're creating more of an impact. And not that I think I'm fucking changing the world with like videos on YouTube or anything, but like, I think that there's a world for both. There's a need for both, but there's way more power in true connection over momentary, entertainment. I, I think that there are people that enjoy, prefer even going to work, doing their job and coming home and living their life <laughs> and just having that separation kind of thing. But I think that a lot of us want to feel like we are making at least an incremental difference through what we're spending the majority of our time and our life doing. And so to me, it's like, I look at you know, all these different areas of my life. And it's like, okay, as a mom, my greater purpose is to help this individual, <laughs> oh my God, I can cry, um, to, to help this person become the best version of themselves and to help them grow and to help them feel loved and teach them love and how to love and teach them how to be passionate about something and to help facilitate finding those passions and, you know, helping them to become a person that can make other people happy as well and help with all those things in other people's lives. Because to me, like that is the purpose of humanity. And as a, a partner and a friend and a daughter and all those things, like I want to do those same things. Like that's what I want to do in my personal relationships. And as a business owner, it's like, I want to be able to create products that make you excited to use what you've purchased and that make you want to continue to use that until you're actually done with it rather than just purchasing something because it's trendy and because I'm telling you you need it and whatever and to make you feel excited about the entire process of you know, what we've created because you feel more a part of it and you feel like you're let in on why it was created and why we made the decisions we did. And like, that's what I find fulfilling through that path of my life. And as a content creator, my greater purpose 
I feel and the purpose that I want to create through it is that connection, that feeling of this larger community that we have worldwide of similar minds and similar experiences and being able to broadcast that messaging to so many people that otherwise I would never have the chance to connect with and to either teach you something or make you feel less alone or whatever it may be. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, I feel like I'm not able to work towards that kind of larger purpose that I've set out for myself through short form content. <laughs> this is the most outrageous video <laughs> ever. Why, why, why am I making this way deeper than it needs to be. People are gonna be like, so don't post on TikTok, you fucking weirdo. But this is where my mind goes and you were just roped into listening to it. So I hope you enjoy. All of that to say, I think I would prefer <laughs> to make more content for YouTube. Now I can kind of look at this overview and feel like producing content for YouTube is the thing that makes me feel the happiest of all the platforms. It's the thing that makes me feel like I'm able to more closely achieve the greater purpose I've set out for myself through this career path. We do have a nanny now, so I am hoping it'll be more realistic for me to be able to commit a little bit more time to creating content for YouTube and stuff like that. And that's that. Really, that's all I had to say. <laughs> That's all I had to say, just this last 45 minutes of rambling. I feel like my timing just so happened to be pretty flawless with getting my full rant out and finishing my makeup at the same time. <gasps> Boop, now we're done. That's it, you guys. Thanks so much for hanging out and watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little conversation of one, a monologue really. Um, the conversation comes after I post it and after you watch it. And yep, that's how the internet works. Okay, um, thanks so much. I will see you guys next time. Peace out.